Heartbreak for Ireland as France produced an emphatic second half performance to win the under-20 Rugby World Cup 50-13 in Cape Town this evening. It was a tight first half, however. Paddy McCarthy's 38th minute yellow card would prove to be costly, costly for Ireland as France showcased their ruthlessness in the opening five minutes of the second half to blow the Irish away. France outscored Ireland 33-0 in the second half, a statistic that tells you all you need to know about this game. Ireland made a bright start to the game, scoring inside three minutes through Frinton Gunn, who used his initiatives to sneak in under the posts through the legs of Pusolo Tuolagi. The 5'8 scrum half used his size to his advantage as he darted under the posts, proving to be too quick for the 6'4 French lock. France responded well, however, deploying their immense physicality and set-piece disruption skills. France would score in the 13th minute in a wonderfully constructed try that oozed class. Inside centre Paul Costas gathered the ball on the halfway line and used his electric feet to dance towards the touchline, dismissing the desperate Irish defenders before producing a sumptuous offload to his winger, Leo Durette, who powered through Henry McAlern, before offloading to scrum half Jeannot, who eventually offloaded to Matis Ferte, who had an easy finish in the end. It was a brilliant team try from France, who showed that they are much more than just the sheer power and size of their pack. In the 30th minute, Ireland scored an excellent pick-and-go try through John Devine. Playing with a series of penalty advantages, Ireland were patient in their attack, before unleashing the inside, ten- inside centre, who made a powerful, powerful run to break through the French defence and give Ireland the lead again, with Prendergast making it two from two conversions. This lead didn't last long, however, as France showed their class to respond immediately. A dropped ball from kickoff gave France a scrum in a dangerous position inside the Ireland 22. And after a series of powerful rocks from France, Lino Julien produced an excellent piece of skill just metres out from the Irish line to scoop up a loose ball and power over the try line, swinging the pendulum back in France's favour. Ireland were then dealt a serious blow in the 38th minute, as Paddy McCarthy was sent to the sin bin for a second defence of collapsing a driving French mole. The French would then make a blistering start to the second half, making the most of their man advantage as they scored a try through Pierre Jouvin inside one minute. Earning a penalty at the start of the half, France kicked to the corner, opting to utilise their monstrous mole from just five metres out. After a perfect throw, the hooker then collected the ball at the back of the line out as France romped over the try line with ease. France are over the try line just three minutes later, blitzing the Irish defence. After a brilliant turnover, scrum half Baptiste Jeannot then produced an excellent kick that found acres of space in the Irish backfield, and despite Nicholson collecting it well, he was met by a wave of French players in what was an excellent chase. Ireland were down on numbers just metres out from their own try line, and using their numbers advantage, France played some incredible passes out wide, where outside Nick, outside centre Nicolas de Porter found himself through for France's fourth try of the game. France then scored three late tries in the 68th, 74th and 78th minutes to put the game to bed. Felte picked up his second of the night. Lenny Nocci, the captain, produced an excellent solo run to beat Prendergast for the corner, and Leo Durette with a dazzling run from the halfway line to race in for an easy finish underneath the posts. So despite a bright start from Ireland, France were as dominant as the scoreline would suggest. As well as profiting from a 10-minute Simbin period, France's defence was immense throughout the entire game, suffocating the Irish attack, who were unable to gain an inch at times. The French pack were able to completely disrupt the Irish set-piece, something which is so pivotal to this Irish team. Meanwhile, the French backs were electric on the counter, often producing excellent hands and quick feet to dance away from the Irish, who were chasing shadows for large swathes of the game. Full-time in Cape Town, Ireland 14, France 50.